an introduction, obviously, uh, there's a lot of burden of expectations on your shoulders as well. <clears throat> uh, people expected, you've been the, uh, you know, the caretaker, Minister for Energy for the last almost two months now, uh, and you're making all the right statements at all the forums, be it media and you know, forums like these, in terms of mm -hmm. energy sector reforms, price rationalization, mm -hmm. deregulation, etc. Uh, but the general impression is that the actual progress has been a bit slow. Uh, moreover, we know all the problems, we know the solutions as well, they've been discussed for a long time, but it's the execution and the implementation part which actually gets somewhere mm -hmm. lost in Islamabad. Mm -hmm. So how would you respond to that, those observations? Do you think that's really a fair criticism? Um, I don't think it's a fair criticism. Uh, because, uh, uh, because I think we have to keep two things in mind. Firstly, when we came, in the very first or second week, we, were, we had to face agitation on the electricity bills. Now, every firefighting issue requires time. So for like two weeks, we were having meetings. We had to you know, continuously report, come up with strategies, go on the media, uh, pacify people. And while that was happening, we saw increase in petrol prices. And while we were handling that, after two weeks, we saw increase in petrol prices again. So right after taking over, the first four weeks were very, very difficult. Luckily, now the dollar is coming down against rupee, and that's helping. Globally, oil prices have also started coming down now. Um, secondly, I think uh, people, the, the, the implementation arms in the government are, 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 there are lots of implementation arms and they're very, very big in size. And they have been living with a certain uh, mindset over a number of years. There is a belief that this is the way things can run. And this is the only way things can run. So someone, the people, a lot of people, a lot of people, it's not like one or two people. You're talking about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people within each ministry's uh, umbrella who believe that ye kuch nahi ho sakta. Aise hi chalega. Aise hi. Aur koi hi nahi hai. Now, in order to change those minds, in order to come up with ideas and convince them, it requires time. Because you need people to execute any idea. And and because we are a caretaker government, so people know that we'll be there for a few months, we'll talk big stuff, we'll be gone. You know, so there, is, there are lots of mental shifts that we need to do. Now, among all of that, we are trying to push through. We're trying to do things. Um, it's, so, so we have taken seven months, uh, and I think this could have been a few, uh, seven weeks, sorry. We have taken seven weeks to really get going with things. This could have been probably five if we would not have faced uh, the initial agitation. But I think I'm happy that we are on the right track. Let's look at what has happened. Seven weeks is, people get settled in seven weeks in a new job. This is the cabinet we are talking about. Now, what have we achieved in seven weeks? When in the country have we seen this sort of massive crackdown? Okay, we lose 589 billion, we have recovered 17 billion. That's 3%. I know that. But then, it is not just 3%. It is a change of the way people are living in this country. It's change of a norm. Gas theft, smuggling, Afghan transit trade, currency trading. Now, some of the work is done by the ministry, but a lot of work is done on these front by the law enforcement agencies. But the ministry is also involved because all the entities, the discos and all, you know, we have to push them. At the same time, the work that we have to do, say on the power sector, the circular debt stock, like today I'm in a position to say that beginning November we will have a plan. Um, we have already finalized the gas prices. and. Last week, every day I was thinking it will happen today, today, today. Finally, today, we have circulated the summary to the ministries. And I know, and, and I'm very happy that we took time. Because last night, this morning, we were constantly 
playing with the numbers. So that's a one big job done. We're talking about finishing the circulated flow in the, power, in the gas sector. So I think, I think we have achieved a bit uh, on the energy. Uh, one can argue more could have been achieved, but I'm happy with the way things are, to be honest. Okay, thank you very much for that. You talked about that in your speech as well, uh, about the issue of cross-subsidies. I was just looking at the data uh, put out by, by NAPRA about uh, uh, the projected sales for 2024. Uh, out of the total 110 billion units of sales that they're projecting in that year by discourse, more than 50% is going to be the domest to the domestic or residential sector. And out of that 50%, half is going to be in the category which is uh, it consumes 200 or less units, where the average rate is less than 14 rupees if you work out the weighted average uh, rate, whereas the national average for, for the sector to break even is just under 30 rupees. So it's just a massive cross-subsidy element in, in the lower consumption brackets, which has to be you know, funded either directly by the government or by cross-subsidies by, by, by other sectors. So do you think that you know, that burden of cross subsidies is actually impairing or impacting the productivity or the competitiveness of other sectors, especially the, the industrial sector. And is there any plan in the works where do you, do you plan to revisit the entire tariff structure and the way these cross subsidies have been uh, morphed over the last 20 odd years or so? Yeah, I, I agree that uh, this needs to be revisited. Uh, what has happened is, people have refused in the past to look at the protected category. They just have refused to look at it. Ji, a protected category hai, usko dekhna hi nahi hai, because of political reasons. Um, but what that has led to is massive cross-subsidies. I think we are cross-subsidizing the domestic sector by to the tune of 700 billion rupees or something, 680 billion rupees, which is huge. So we need to do that. We, we need to rationalize the tariff structure in a way that the burden will be less on the uh, poorer classes and will be high on the rich classes, but that the disparity has to be fair and a bit balanced. But just to share with you, when we were uh, looking at the gas prices, the same issue was existing in the gas prices also. Uh, and we talked about why don't, and, and the first thought was we can't touch the protected category. Now that's 60% of the people. So I agree that we should not uh, put burden on them, but we are giving gas in the houses at monthly bill of 200 rupees, 150 rupees, 250 rupees. This is the price of gas in the urban centers people are paying. Now the same same income level of people in the rural areas are buying LPG. They might be using uh, other, other means, biomass and all, but if they buy LPG, they pay much higher price. So it has to be fair. So what we have done is on the gas, we have made sure that on the lower categories, the impact is less than 500 rupees. A 500 rupees ka burden or 400 rupees ka burden, log bardash kar sakte. So we have done that in the gas. So there is a precedent now, and hopefully that will be approved, inshallah. So we will do a similar exercise of tariff rationalization in the power sector also. And I agree with what you're saying, that okay. we need to do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, globally, energy transition, which is, is something which is already in the works, progressing at a very, very uh, rapid pace, that that's something which is going to happen in Pakistan as well, whether we plan it or we just let it happen in, in a chaotic way. Do you, think, do you think that there's any thinking happening at any uh, level within the government that we have to transition towards uh, a electrification of mobility of other consumption of uh, various energy forms and using alternate means and domestic resources to fund that energy consumption whereby the uh, the, the power sector emerges as a main uh, you know final form of energy and as as, as uh, you know people say it now uh, globally as well that electricity is going to be the new oil because everything is going to be funded by electricity and electricity is going to come from uh, you know, renewable resources. So is there any, any coherent thinking happening at the government, at Planning Commission, or the, your ministry, at Ministry of Energy, or other regulators? No, it's not happening. 
and it should happen. It's not happening because we have parked various responsibilities in silos. We have got, for example, within the power uh, division, we are responsible for renewable. So we talk about renewable, but the thinking on renewable is hydro, wind, solar. The thinking doesn't really, the thinking is not really electrifying these things through renewable or through whatever means of molecule. Uh, then we have NECA, which is responsible for energy efficiency and conservation and all. Then there's climate change. Then there's petroleum division. So it's all scattered. Uh, this will require to be brought under, uh, it, it, it'll come within the, the energy sector. Uh, now NECA was transferred to Ministry of Science and Technology for a few years. Now it has come back to us. So there is no uh, structured or coherent thinking. It's not happening. Um, and maybe at some stage, Pakistan will need uh, an energy directorate or something like that where this whole responsibility of, uh, uh, of energy uh, transition uh, comes under one umbrella. But at the moment, uh, that's not the, uh, it's, it's not being tackled at the moment. Okay. Uh, the introduction of CTBCM doesn't benefit the masses as it benefits consumers above one megawatt consumption only. So what's your comment on that? That's true. It's, it's a phase-wise approach uh, because government is the single buyer. We have a single buyer model. Uh, and uh, if the single buyer day one, if CTBCM is, uh, is, is implemented across all consumers, uh, it will not be practical. So in phase one, 15% of the consumers, which is more than one megawatt, will be going into CTBCM. Um, and then other consumers will take a while. Um, the, the roadmap for complete implementation of CTBCM is quite long. It's like four or five years. Uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, I think it should be shorter. But uh, in order to make it shorter, we will need to do some changes on the, on the, on how we are buying energy, how government comes out of it, how we issue supply licenses, uh, the wheeling charges and all of that. But, but, but I think the way to go is in the first phase, we should only do the bulk consumers. There's no other choice but to go in phase wise. Okay, another question, what are the roadblocks in setting up new LNG terminals, uh, especially allocating pipeline capacity? So why are we waiting for only uh, Russia to set up the Orsal pipeline? Sorry, the last part? Um, why are we waiting for only Russia to set up North-South pipeline? That's, that's part of the question which, which came up. So you can probably start with answering the, the initial part, which is what are the issues which are holding up setting up new LNG terminals? Is that the allocation of pipeline capacity? We have the pipeline capacity to cater to one terminal. What happened in the previous government, two terminals were optioned, Energas and uh, Tabir uh, by Mitsubishi. Uh, so, but, but only one terminal can come at the existing pipeline capacity. There's no roadblock in that. Uh, we have already engaged with, uh, with, with, with these terminals and, uh, and I think uh, one of them will come, will, will come through. So okay, okay, yeah. excellent, thank you. And, and Park Stream, the Russian pipeline, um, it is not the only option, but it is an option which is on the table, which is in advanced stages uh, because of the Russia-Ukraine war and all the sanctions that has stopped. But, uh, but that's, that can be a good project for Pakistan because initially it was on build, operate, transfer model on a certain tariff, then the structure was changed. But I think if we can go back to a tariff-based structure, it might be a good option for the country because we don't have the dollars to put in right now. So it may not be a bad option. Okay. You, you talked about that in your speech uh, you know, earlier. The, what's your view on prioritization of electricity transmission, especially part of the, of the, of the supply chain um, and also the distribution sector as well? Do you think that within your limited caretaker set of stint, uh, you can actually have some sort of a plan in place which can be then set in motion and not reversed by the subsequent governments whereby this prioritization of the transmission and distribution networks actually takes place? Transmission, though, we will not touch. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it has to come after probably this course. So we can pick one of the three battles at this stage. And I think this course is the battle we want to pick. Transmission will follow later. There is a conversation about 
listing NTDC on the stock market. He was a profitable entity. Uh, so that's what finance ministry and SECP will look after. We don't mind if it is listed. But on the privatization front, we will not look at NTDC. We just can't at this stage. Our focus is discourse. Um, I think we, in three months, uh, we, can, we, we, can, we can put a certain framework. We can do the regulatory changes, um, most of them, and have a roadmap for that. But in three months, it is just not possible to, to get a disco out of government's hands. Uh, we have seen global examples. It generally takes minimum six to eight months to, to, to consummate the entire transaction. But, uh, but, but I think we will do enough work that this is continued and the next government takes it forward. And I think they will have to take it forward. There's no choice. The government will have to come out of it. Otherwise, things will collapse. Right. 